I've got my TA Indiana with me today for this orthographic to isometric sketching video. The drawing you see on the screen doesn't look too complicated. It's mostly rectangular surfaces, but that one big slope up front actually does make it pretty complicated with the rectangular cutouts that go lengthwise through the surface. So in this video, I'm gonna show you how to set up the bounding box for your isometric drawing, then show you the best place to start, which is gonna be the top, front, and right-hand sides, and then show you how to take advantage of lines that you know are going to be parallel to each other in order to finish the drawing through that tapered surface. The first thing to do when drawing a bounding box is to choose a scale. And looking at all the numbers in this drawing, I see that there's a lot of 0.25 increments. So the first things that I wanna check is whether multiplying all the numbers by four, I'm gonna see if that sizing will work because that would be really convenient if all of the dimensions ended up being in even integers. So looking at the overall length, width, and height, I'll be drawing a 12 by seven by five box. I drew the bounding box on the page in yellow to symbolize drawing very lightly. The entire bounding box is not gonna be part of your final drawing, so you draw it really lightly at first just to make sure your drawing's gonna fit well on the page and that your scale actually makes sense. So the next step is to look at the top, front, and right side views and try to figure out which surfaces are actually on the front, right, and top because those will be the easiest ones to draw first. And so the first thing that I'm drawn to is this surface on the right-hand side on the top and then matching that up along with that right-hand surface on the front view. Using those dimensions, those two lines correspond to that rectangular surface, which is then on the far right-hand side, and I can draw it in first. And it becomes that rectangle on the right-hand side of the box. And unfortunately, looking at the right side view, the only other two surfaces there are the ones that I've highlighted in blue and red, and both of those surfaces are also visible as faces on another view, meaning they're at a slope, they're at an angle. If they were purely visible, they would just be lines on the other two views. So now I'm gonna go ahead and move to the top. So on the top view, we've already ruled out that big slope surface on the right, but looking at the left, you can see that those blue rectangles match up to the same length and width as those red lines on the front and right side view, that means they're gonna be at the very top surface and I can draw them in right away. Now, unfortunately, these three blue rectangles match up to those three red lines on the right side view, so they're sunken down a little bit from the top, so I'm gonna to have to come back to those later. And this finishes the top view, so now let's look at the front and see if any of the front surfaces are actually on the front surface. So looking at the front surface, we already decided before that that blue surface is actually at an angle, and so it's not gonna be flat up front but the red shape actually will be. So you can see that it matches the width on the top and then also the height on the right-hand side. So we can go ahead and draw this shape first. And in drawing this face, I've reached the first tricky part of this problem because that purple circled corner there, there's no height actually given. I know the height's gonna be somewhere along this red line, but I don't know exactly where. But I do know information about this blue line. So what I'm gonna do is draw a construction line that goes along that blue line, and then I'll be able to finish this surface by just tracing part of that blue line. So using that height of 0.5, I'm drawing a temporary blue line there from the very top to that very right-hand side, and the intersection, that red and blue line, is gonna be the corner that I'm gonna keep. Now this remaining blue line doesn't actually continue to that bottom front corner. It actually bends inwards towards that right-hand side. And these four circled corners are already on the drawing. So I can actually finish this face by just connecting the dots. And now I'll erase that blue construction line because we're done with this front corner part of the drawing. So in order to avoid the complicated middle part of the drawing, there's still one more easy line that can be drawn, which is connecting these two corners. All right, so now come these rectangular cutouts. I'm gonna start first by looking at the right-hand view because that might be the easiest to draw because it's just like a staircase cutout. And if there were no hidden lines, this is what the back surface would look like with each of these rectangles cut out. But because we're looking kind of down from a top-hand view, part of these are gonna end up being hidden. So I've sketched that shape into the back of the drawing and you can see that I drew in black the lines that I'm gonna keep because they're visible. And I temporarily drew the blue ones just as a visual guide to show you how some of the surfaces are hidden, but that the shape actually does fit into that back part of the drawing. So now moving forward a little bit, these red and blue sections are gonna form a shape kind of like this sketch here. 
But the tricky part is that we're not given any sort of angle. And so in order to draw that red angled surface, we're gonna to have to use some information we already have on the drawing about the slope of that big front taper. And what we can tell from the front top and right side view is all of these green lines are parallel to each other. So that's gonna be the trick that we're gonna use is we're just gonna draw a bunch of parallel lines along this surface to connect that top edge to the front edge and just trace as much of them as we need to actually solidify the drawing. And to draw a parallel line, you're not measuring angles, you just need to make sure that you're just offsetting. So in this case, I just offset by two squares in one direction. So with this green line in place, I know that that red angled surface actually just comes until it hits the green line. So I can first darken in that vertical surface, that trapezoid, and then shift forward one block to darken in the horizontal surface rectangle. And we'll repeat that same process, drawing another parallel construction line from this new corner. So this parallel line is only one square shifted over from the last one. And the surface that I just darkened in is this blue shaded surface now on the front view. So looking at what we have so far, it's quite an optical illusion because that top front surface is sort of right in line with this lowest level cutout, but it'll become more clear as we keep shifting further to the left. So as I start to draw this rectangle for this red horizontal surface, it runs into that top surface, which shows that this is actually gonna be hidden. So before darkening in that red surface, I wanna find out how much of it is hidden, which means I'm gonna draw the front part first, which is this purple surface. So I start off with a green construction line that is shifted two squares up from that flat front surface. And since I'm drawing this blue surface that I've highlighted on the front view, I'm actually starting from that circled corner that is hidden in the back. So I'm gonna draw in blue so that I'll be able to erase it easily later, but this will show me where the front taper hits. So that blue shape on the front view on my isometric is that it's blue on the left, blue on the bottom, green on the angled surface, and then black on top is that same shape. And what that lets me do is color in that very small piece of diagonal just up into that intersection point. And from there, I just draw one square up into the right, which is this blue line here. And I've cleared a lot of the drawing away because it's time to draw another construction line because we have one more diagonal to draw. So I circled in blue the line that we're trying to draw, and then I added green a construction line that is shifted in three squares from the front surface. And that lets me darken in that last angled surface and then that red horizontal line that's been there for a while. All right, so let's erase all the construction lines and see what's left. Well, if I had used a ruler, it would probably look much nicer than this, but let's see if it's at least qualitatively correct by double checking with the front top and right side view and see if all of the faces are visible that should be. From the right side view, there's three visible faces and all three of those faces are shown with the correct qualitative shapes here. So from the front, there's only two visible faces, the blue and the red, and those both seem to match the right shape. And there's also two hidden faces, the red and blue, which are also present on the drawing. And then looking at the top view, we've got a total of six different faces, the two blue ones that we drew first, the angled tapered surface in red, and then three purple surfaces, one of which we can see the whole thing, and two, we can just barely see the front part just sort of sticking out. So last tip when dealing with angled surfaces on an orthographic to isometric sketch is to first draw all of the flat surfaces that are on the front top and right side view, and those might help give you some lines to connect to. And then for the big flat surface itself, Draw parallel lines, since even though you're not given dimensions to exactly where your shape intersects that surface, you know that it, the whole surface is gonna be flat, so each of those lines are parallel, and you can use that as a visual guide, and just draw very faintly, draw very lightly with your construction lines to make them easy to erase. And also, use a ruler so your drawing looks much better than mine does. If you found this video helpful, please hit the subscribe button so you can see each of my new videos as they come out. And if you want to watch another video right now, YouTube's got a couple of recommendations up on the screen for you. Thanks for watching and enjoy the rest of your day.